I can't, y'all don't know um, um, how filled I am at this moment um, for this to be happening. Jordan was a lot of things to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, to the world, she was a MacArthur Fellow yeah. genius. Okay. Yeah. Um, she was a woman of influence. Um, she was friend, she was a sister, she was an aunt. But for me, she was mommy. Yes, yes. Uh, she was my mother. And being a part of this legacy and still being able to stand here, um, forwarding her dream, I often wonder if she could have ever imagined oh. what DCDC DC would be in its 54th year. My God. And my answer is yes. 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 Because she believed she could do it. Yes. yes. And so she did. Yes. And so <laughs> all of you, everybody that's standing here is the evidence of the work that she laid the ground for. And I am thankful every day, even though I don't say it, I am thankful every day for this community that supports it and for the community beyond. Jody laid the groundwork for DC DC to be a part of a world community. So we are the community of the world. Oh my God. And that was evidenced by the dancers I took to Russia and we were treated like rock stars. And so every day when I get up, I think about how complete my life is. And I have to say that dancers, you are amazing. You are absolutely amazing. You are the heartbeat. You are the soul of this organization. And this work could not be done without you. I don't say it enough, but I don't want you to ever forget it for one second that without you guys, there would absolutely be no DCDC. So thank you, I love you all. I love you all. I said enough. So I'm gonna invite the Dr. Reverend Rodney Carter from Zion Baptist Church, along with his first lady, Dawn Carter, who many of you know as Dawn Wood, to come up and lead us in prayer for this momentous occasion. Amen. Come on, somebody that loves the Lord, just give God a hand praise. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you love the Lord, it's just something about just being alive. Come on, God. Come on, God. Normally we do a balloon launch, and I've been asked these last years to lead the prayer for the balloon launch. Uh, this year we've got something else in mind. Amen. Uh, but I just want to make sure that you understand about the life and the legacy and the memory of such a great woman, such a visionary. As we look around, we understand that God is generational. And we see the children, the young dancers that just keep going, just keep going. So we want to thank God if we give God a praise for the company that maintains, that continues to strive for excellence and continue to provide for this type of culture uh, in this city. Uh, and also, they, people know about, if I talk too long, I'll mess it up. So, so we want to just say the Lord's Prayer really quickly. Amen. If you could just join me in the Lord's Prayer, we can suffice it that way. Our Father, uh, art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
something official that I'd like to say. <laughs> I guess I uh, hope everything I say is official. Yes. So I want to, first of all, I want to thank um, my fellow commissioners for being here. Yes. And we got the whole crew. Uh, right. Got um, Commissioner Shaw behind me, Commissioner Fairchild, and um, also Ms. Fraternal Sloss over here. Now, real joke, uh, Commissioner Fairchild was not here when I got here at 10 o'clock. I called him and said, well, yeah. I don't know how he got here that quickly. <laughs> That's it. Okay. But first of all, our city manager is not able to make it. She won't be give uh, apologies for her. She's uh, at the office working on some stuff uh, that we need to have done today. But um, this is very, very special for this community. You know, I go back, way back, in terms of the Diggs family, uh, uh, the, uh, Mr. Ewing Diggs was my scout leader way back 100 years ago. <laughs> So I'm, I'm family here, so when they called me to come up as family, yeah, yeah I stepped up, of course. But the uh, going back and uh, understanding again that my children, uh, my, my daughter and my granddaughter, were involved in this dance company as well. And so when I used to come down and watch some practice, see some of you, and some of you were down there then, you look a lot different now than you were when you were six years old and seven years old and, and whatnot. So uh, it's a blessing to have you here. Additionally, um, where's Sherry? William, Sherry. Yeah, Sherry. Come on, Sherry, for a second. <laughs> Sherry. Yo, yeah, yeah. give her a hand. Give her a hand. Sherry. Come on, Sherry. Yeah. 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 Sherry was one of my students in, in, in uh, Belmont High School. All right, now I did not teach her dance. Now, let me be real clear. I did not teach her dance. But uh, again, she brought so much richness to this company, so much richness to uh, this community. And certainly, as, as we mentioned before, to not only the, this, this area, but to the United States and to the world. Yes. Because this company is known every place you go. Yes. No matter where you go, being in um, Connecticut, D.C., wherever, people always talk about D.C., D.C. And I know there's another one of my former students, uh, Amor. Wave your hand. Let's see. Okay. Another one of mine. He's, now, I did teach him art, so he's, uh, he's good in this. So. All right, guys. So I'm going to pass it back because, uh, uh, like the pastor said, if I have this mic too long, I may mess it up. And so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pass it back to those who know what they're doing. Thank you so much. Mayor Mims, thank you. And to the commissioners, thank you very much for the support for this event. We know that we would not be here without your support, and we are very grateful that you not only took the time, but you understand the treasure that Geraldine really, really has been to all of us over these years. So we appreciate that. How about a round of applause for our city? Thank you for your support. And now, Debbie, you can walk over. Silent drum roll, you guys. Special Geraldine story. So please 
join us at 840 Germantown, right down the street, as we move forward in this celebration of our sister, our genius, Geraldine. Thank you all very much. Join us at the studio. Special memories about Geraldine London, and um, we wanted to be able to just give you a chance to not only share your special memory, but also for us to continue honoring Geraldine in a special way. So we're going to begin with Kevin Moore, who became the artistic director following the untimely death of Geraldine. Um, let's see, can everyone hear me? Yes! Okay. This is, this memory I want to share is not deep, but it is special uh, for me because it, it points to uh, Geraldine just being a, a, uh, an all-around, very grounded human person with a wonderful sense of self as it relates to other people and a wonderful sense of humor and a great sport about so many things. I remember and I think I, I, might, I might have even a photo of it. Uh, the club was Spunkies. <laughs> 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 Maybe a company event, we were all gathered there in Spunkies on the dance floor or for the night, for the evening there. And uh, at the time, uh, uh, Whitney Houston was very popular at that time. And her song came up on the I, Every Woman. <laughs> I am every woman that day. She started and then all the guys in the company. Gary, you were there. I was wow. There. <laughs> All the guys, and uh, it was Alan, Brian Teasley, I think, Isaiah, Brandon, Brandon, I think, and they all grabbed Geraldine and pulled her off. I remember. You remember? That was such a wonderful moment, and they were all, all the guys were dancing around. Geraldine at that time, there's a song, I Am Every Woman, and it was just such a beautiful, beautiful, fun moment, <laughs> and she has, she, uh, she had a look first of a surprise, and then she was in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Geraldine was such a special lady, such a special teacher, um, and, uh, the, uh, her effect on all our lives uh, is, you know, that we keep coming back to this this uh, this person, keep celebrating this person, and um, so many young dancers and s that I knew back in the day <laughs> celebrate her, celebrate what she was, what she brought to them, and. I think, and I hope I'm not embarrassing you, uh, Lisa 
Robin, who was a runner of Shirley Dances, she, she came here for this the event to celebrate uh, Geraldine. And I knew Lisa, I first met Lisa when she was at University of Cincinnati, and they didn't know that she was trained by Geraldine, and but she beautiful dancer back then. Lisa, yes. can you stand up? Coming back to share with us, and uh, and I love that you're all here <laughs> celebrating and the Geraldine London Way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Can we share the stamp campaign in case someone here doesn't know, please? Okay, yes. So, we have an opportunity. We've launched a campaign. We launched it back in, uh, I think, August. And it's a, it's a letter writing campaign to get Geraldine London honored on the U.S. postage stamp. Uh, the process is we just keep sending letters into the uh, Citizen uh, Stamp Advisory Board. And uh, they will make a decision uh, based on those, uh, those letters coming in. What we've done is we have three versions of letters. Uh, there's a three-page document that's very detailed. And then there is a one-page letter. And we also have, in the back now, we have postcards that you can sign. Sign a postcard, and we will collect those two. And what we want you to do is, so we can keep a good count on how many letters are coming in, and we want to sit a bulk, a big bulk of letters. Our target right now is in June. We want to send 10,000 letters. That's a big number, that's a big, that's a big haul, but that's what's gonna, but that's what it's gonna take. Uh, so we want to send uh, 10,000 in June of 23. Um, the Citizen Staff Advisory Board, they meet four times a year, just background about them. They meet four times a year, they uh, go over, they, you know, they pick through the uh, recommendations for the staff, and then the next meeting they have, they will decide whether that happens, whether the staff can move forward, and then the next meeting, the, uh, they recommend it to whoever the head of the, the big honcho at the staff place is. <laughs> uh, so, if you haven't signed anything, there are some uh, stamps at the table, and just leave them there. We will collect them, and then we will send that big batch of letters in uh, June of, this, uh, of next year. <coughs> and uh, we, so far, we uh, we have collected almost 800, and we're well on our way. But we'll keep pushing. Thank you. So if we if we write a letter, we send it here to the studio. Yes. And, and a good point, excellent point. You can write your own letter. You don't have to use uh, what we prepared. If you have a special memory or something that you want to share, that's, that's perfectly fine. You can write your own letter. But do send it to DCDC, 840 Germantown Street. Can you sign something more than once? Is it just a one-time signature? Um, I, I don't know. I, probably. You probably. I don't know that they'll be back. Check them. But probably. Can't. One signature. And it has to be a wet signature. So you actually have to literally sign it out for the cap. Any other questions about the stamp? Okay. I'm far different than I was when I first got to these things. I can tell you, Jody said, 
to talk with you in here, not in Journey, um, what can I say about her? It's like taking a, a wallet, and you know how back in those days, and they show you pictures, and it just falls out. Mm -hmm. So much to say about her. So you get richness and depth. I, I, sugar and spice, sweet and salty is her. Very honest, didn't miss words. Uh, had a drive, a commitment, and intensity, but also had that incredible ability to nurture, mm -hmm. to support, to guide, to mentor. And when you walk into a room, she would just turn around and she'd smile and she'd say, Shana. And I know that everyone felt that from her, that she made you feel very important and necessary. And that's why we all feel like she belongs to us. Uh, she, <coughs> she's not only nurturing through the dancers that I got to come into with Sherry and Dawn and Debbie and Gary and Kevin and Calvin, but we continue that, and you can feel that driving spirit coming through her. And I said to myself, who is this woman that has this ability as a young woman that icons like James Truett and Alvin Ailey are calling her, her, for advice and wisdom? And that speaks volumes about who she is and what she had to offer. She had that vision and that tenacity to see it through, always had that fighting spirit no matter what. Even when she was down, she had that punch and she would get back up. She knew, she knew the important significance of what she had to bring to not only Dayton, but globally. And so we today are continuing that legacy and that vision of that incredible young little girl. Um, she never gave up. I remember we were in the car and she said, I'm gonna send you back home. I'm gonna try to send you back home. I really want to be here. <laughs> and even Mr. B said to me, I remember when you first got here, Jordan wanted to send you home. He said, but you know, look look where you landed. She saw, and that's why I've been very committed, not only just to the organization, but to, to this incredible woman who taught me a lot, who guided me, who gave me a place, who gave me a home as we continue this lineage. It starts from here, and the roots spread out like an incredible tree. She goes way beyond to many, many, many individuals in dance, outside of dance. So, journey, always, forever, very important and special and significant to me, as she is to all of you. She was my mother. <laughs> and every Saturday morning, my mother, Geraldine, and myself, we'd walk to the Linden Center for her to take her dance class. I was too young. My mother and I would sit out in the lobby and wait. After class, we would walk back home. My sister said, come on, Carolyn. She would take me down the basement <laughs> and teach me her class. <laughs> At age seven, she started teaching. <laughs> and she taught me every Saturday Three years later, I get old enough to start taking dance. 
And it was Miss Harmaine Swartz was my first teacher. And after class, Miss Harmaine told my mother, well, I'm going to have to move Carol to Geraldine's class. <laughs> she knows more than my degrees. <laughs> said it took me three years. I said, me too, Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference, I had my own private teacher. <laughs> this has been such an incredible day. I am so proud to be Geraldine Blunden's sister. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Because she did so many wonderful things. <clears throat> and I wanted to be just like her. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever she did, I wanted to do. Yes. And I love all of you, and I thank all of you for this wonderful, wonderful commemoration of my sister. Hello, everybody. For those that don't know me, I'm Gary, but on the stage, I was Judy. The ostrich. The ostrich. <laughs> so, I have so many stories of Geraldine from when I came from New York. She kept me here and all the things. And I was a young kid, untried from college. Came here. We would get in there. We argue and argue and argue. And through all those lessons, she taught me a lot of things about life. And how she, her generation, and I was like, well, your generation taught my generation. Mm -hmm. So the things that we're doing is because of your generation. We go back around and around, and many a time she would just, we're arguing, and the next thing she go, come on, let's go to the house. Like, I'm just arguing, what you talking about? <laughs> and then she'll call me down to the studio, because she's just at the studio by herself. She'll be like, get down here. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something. Get down here, I'll be down here in the next hour. Be down here, meet me down here. And of course, you have to go down there and you sit with Geraldine. And you be like, girl, and we start arguing. <laughs> that is how it went. So one day I was in her room, we were on tour, and her room was a blizzard. And I was like, there's no way in this world I'm staying in this room with you. Sit down. <laughs> okay, fine. We sit there for an hour and we just talk and talk. And she taught me so many things. And then when we come to the studio, she'd be like, I need you to look at this for me. Didn't realize she was training and lifting me up in the things that happens around the dance and not just dance. And I thank her for all those little things because it did help me in my career off stage and on stage. And she taught so many lessons to us dancers that it was not just about dance. It was about your life and everything that happens in your life. Because I was from New York and I'm from a handicapped home and she would talk to me about my um, family life and she'd go, you know, my husband said, your mother's missing her arm. I was like, yeah, Geraldine, ever since you met me. She's like, you was? She said, I thought it was just behind her back. <laughs> 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 she said, I boy. His mother didn't have an arm and her, his father's in a chair. And they're like, really? <laughs> That's all right. I danced because of that, and she taught me to keep on dancing. And then one time, we were all on tour, and we were on stage, and they all stretching and doing their legs all like that. And Geraldine comes by and goes, hmm, y'all ain't doing nothing. And we're looking at her like, mm hmm yeah. And this one guy, won't name his name, he said something to her, she said, if I can get my leg on the stage, and the stage was high, mm -hmm. she said, y'all help me get my leg on the stage. It's like, okay. She plopped that on there, and she's just like, okay, now, are you dancing? <laughs> We're like, okay. <laughs> so she taught us a lot, and this one other story, I'm known for the Oscars, so they say. And me and Geraldine went to Columbus to do a show, and we're in a room just like this, and I hate being this close in that costume. It's just like, oh my God, I'm a little too close and I ain't got enough feathers because Geraldine kept taking feathers off the costume. <laughs> so one day it was in a room, it was nothing but this older lady society. And I'm like, I'm naked. 
This is one of these people. And you know, you gotta oil up and do all this other stuff for this costume. And I'm dancing, I come out, the first step, costume went pop. Second step, it went pop, pop. And the whole back came open, and I did the whole dance like this. And I refused to turn around. And as I'm doing the dance, Geraldine was right there, she came up on the stage, and she was like, she said, like, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. I said, my costume popped open, <laughs> and I'm not turning around this close to all these ladies. She said, why not? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and she's like, we'll fix that. We're going to put safety pins from now on. I said, we are not putting no safety pins. <laughs> no safety pins pop, and they all into me. So I quietly went up to this costume lady and I said, we can't to fix this costume because she wants me to be pinned in like she's oh she's like a safety pin would always fix. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> so after that, we had rows and rows of snaps and hooks and eyes. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. I was like, Geraldine, that's the only time we butted. I was like, I am not turning around for this day. She said, we'll do it again and we'll see. That's my story. <laughs> Anyone else have any? I, I, I often say to the current dancers, I wish you would have known her. I wish you would have gotten the opportunity to walk through space and place with her. If just for one day. Um, she is such an amazing human. Just, just her humanness was amazing. But I see it in you guys. I do. I see it from... Shauna being able to transcend. I see it from me telling you stories. I see it from the people who have been close to the core that can tell you what it was like to walk through the space with her. And so her legacy lives on in all of you, each and every day in each of your own individual spirits make the legacy stronger. So I thank you all for that. I think everybody who makes this thing work, and that's a lot of people. It's not just the people under the roof at 840 Germantown Street. It's a lot of people. It's the people who come to the theater. It's David Hastings at the Victoria saying, I got you, what you need? It's everybody. It is our incredible staff. It's our incredible board. You know, it's Lamore. When I call him up and say, Lamore, you need to come steam the tablecloths for the reception. <laughs> and he comes. He comes. And he comes. <laughs> so I just thank everybody for the part that they do. Because each person's part is integral to making this thing work. I have to say to Q, thank you for this room. Thank you. Thank you for being here yesterday, long after we turned the lights off in the studio, and been staying to make this a welcoming space for friends and family in this celebration of, of, of my mother, of mama. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, two things. Um, it's like a football game. Jerilyn picked up that football and she passes it. And so don't fumble. Let's not fumble. Mm -hmm. Let's get that football and let's mm -hmm. carry it into that end zone. Mm -hmm. No matter how many trials and tribulations I've watched Jerilyn go through, she had this ability to push through, to believe, to trust, to dig her heels in. Always. She never let it drop. And so Jerilyn would always say, do it. It's my way and not your way. <laughs> so how fitting that she has a street called Jolene Blunden Way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I would like to say that I've heard testimony about how exact she was mm -hmm. and how she demanded excellence. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. The girls that were part of the company, when my daughter was a part of the company, they would talk about Geraldine all the time. But on Friday night, you know what they would do? 
pack up their stuff. They didn't have rehearsals on Friday nights. So on Friday nights, they go home, pack up all their stuff, and tell their mom, can I go for the journal piece to sing? Every Friday night, Debbie and Derek can tell you, they had a minimum of 10 dancers to spend the night every Friday night. <laughs> so Geraldine had not only had them all week teaching them, then she had a slumber party on Friday night. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and I am Geraldine Hall. Everything you said is true about Geraldine. But I've known... I met Geraldine when we were both 14 years old. And so we had all kinds of a history together. And then Geraldine and I, our birthdays were a few days apart. Then our daughters were born a few days apart. And so Geraldine's been a part of my life, almost all of my life. And we did a lot of fun things together. I can't share everything. <laughs> up at the, air, uh, at the train station here in Dayton. And when we got to the train station, just as it pulled out of Dayton, Geraldine and I looked out the window and we had missed our, we had missed our, our, our place to get off. And so we had to go take the train to the next station and Mr. and Mrs. Gilbert were not real happy, but we did fun kinds of things as a teenager. And one other thing was when you're talking about fun things, when I was coming along, we, they had dances at the YWCA on Summit Street and at the YMCA on West Fifth Street, just down the street here. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, par the parties that were the most fun were the ones that were down at the lower end of Fifth Street at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Kilburn always, he was our chauffeur. And so he dropped us off at the YWCA. <laughs> so he'd come back and pick us up when it was over. Mm -hmm. So we go into the YWCA, and then we take our you know, little trip down to the YMCA. And at that time, something broke loose down on the lower end of Fifth Street. And Mighty Williams, and those of you who are they told me it's no Mighty. Mighty was in the middle of the street, making everybody go inside the YMCA to get us off the street. And she said, nobody leaves here until your parents. How are we going to get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> get back to where we were supposed to be. <laughs> of course, then we had, to, we had to suck it up and do it. Call Mr. Kilburn to come and get us. But she was my friend. I love her and I love her still. Mm -hmm. Thank wow. you so much for this trip. Wow. Um, I, I don't even have words to explain what Jolene was and is to me. Um, she's my aunt, my mother's sister, but um, had a, both hands in raising me. Um, I lived with Jolene several times <laughs> um, in high school and as a baby because my mother was sick. And I just miss her every day. This is incredible. I'm just, like Debbie said earlier, I'm so filled and just so blessed to be able to see it. Thank you. I, I know y'all know I'm not today. I'm tired. <laughs> First of all, it's just rare to hear Debbie say mommy. That's what she says. It's so rare. It's so rare. Um, but, you know, I, I would say I'm kind of glad I was kind of used as an experiment. Because I always say to male dancers, you stand on my shoulders, and I mean that humbly and sincerely with all affection, but it's true. Um, one thing, you know, we, we Geraldine has taught us, and they were saying, I'm piggybacking off of Gary, but so much it was more than, than just dance. Yes. When you have Mr. Truer coming and speaking five, six, seven different languages, mm -hmm. 
Uh, we're learning anatomy. We're learning language. We're learning health. We, le we learn so much. I mean, we see what Sherry does. We learn how we, when we go in for a show, we would drop off our dance bag. We go get the floor. We lay it down, tape it down, pull it up, put it back, bring it back. We did. We learned everything. We learned. She taught us. She did teach us life. Uh, I still quote her all the time, all together, simultaneously, all together, at the same time. You know, I still say that. But I'm gonna say this real quick, and because I don't want to be remiss. Debbie's grandparents. I wish you all knew them. And I'm trying to get too sensitive because I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sensitive. They were the most loving. I mean, yes. forget the Cosby family. I mean, I've never <laughs> seen a family so tight knit and united. It was just unbelievable. I mean, they were our grandparents as well. Jervin was our mother. They were our grandparents. I've never seen them. There was no dress. They were, but to think of everything, everything they put in Geraldine and nurtured her so we can have this, that credit goes to them. It goes to them. I've never seen them not at a show. I've never seen them. I've never seen them not there until you know God called them back. That's one time seeing. Even then, it felt strange, you know. But it, your grandparents, I applaud them. I thank them for, for having her and, and the tenacity that they've given her, that they've given given to us. Your grandparents, I salute them. <laughs> and uh, I will have to get permission from uh, Debbie and Carol Ann because I'm going to talk a, a little bit about medical uh, regarding Geraldine. So do I have your permission? Yes. It's not going to be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I became known to Geraldine and to each other back in the late 70s uh, that I, I was on the board of a DC at that time. And uh, actually became uh, the chair of the board from 78 to 80. Uh, but not only that, I had the privilege and the honor of also being Geraldine's doctor. And in fact, the entire family, <laughs> including Mr. Kilman, the right. grandfather. I mean, the father of Geraldine and grandfather to uh, David, too. And talking about what China mentioned in terms of uh, the tenacity that. Uh, Geraldine had it, she never gave up, as well as the unity in the family. There was one time that uh, Geraldine got sick from hmm. an infection that we didn't know where it came from, and that was kind of going around, uh, uh, going on around that time. She was really deathly sick, mm -hmm. to the extent that she was in intensive care. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, her father, Mr. Cuban, was also in the yes. hospital. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so here was I going between both of them to try to see what we can do. And you can just see in Mr. Kilburn's face, he didn't say anything about, hmm. let me go, let her leave. Yeah. And that's what happened. Yes. Yeah. He went on, but Geraldine lived on. Yes. Yeah. yes. And even though it was really tough for Geraldine at that time, to the extent that during that same time, I think it was a city or some organization that gave awards and they were giving award to Geraldine. We had to get special permission from the hospital for the administration to be able to let her go. Yes, that right. Award. Mm -hmm. you know, so she was able to make that because we didn't know if she would be able to leave the hospital. Right. But leave the hospital she did because of her tenacity, yes. because of her, I'm not going to give up, and of course by God's grace. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that, uh, Regarding the unity in the family, when the father is, or you, he didn't say, but you could see it in his eyes that let me, let me go, let her stay. Yeah. So that's the kind of family that it was, and so it's just a wonderful feeling to be part of uh, Geraldine's life uh, for all the later part of her life, and uh, even with uh, Debbie and uh, the husband and uh, the, the father and all of that. So uh, I have two favorite organizations in my life, DCDC and Project Cure. So DCDC is very special to me. Geraldine is very special to me. Okay, then on behalf of the family and the 
ACDC band, of which you're all a part, and uh, our special board of directors who provide guidance and leadership, and the tremendous staff, as well as the amazing dancers. People ask all the time, how do you keep it going? And you keep it going because of the fantastic art that we have on stage and off the stage on an ongoing basis, and the fantastic support by Dr. Beverly gives as many of the donors and the leadership from our board of directors. So on behalf of all of us, we thank you for being here with this celebration. And I will tell you that Commissioner Shaw said to me as he was leaving, I wish I could come and be a part of uh, this part of the celebration, but we have some more work to do. Mm -hmm. And so he had to leave, but he said what he really felt in his heart was that West Dayton needed this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he was very grateful that we pushed this initiative forward and we didn't give up. And so in order for us to continue honoring Geraldine's legacy, do what you do, do what you do on a regular basis, give your heart and your soul and your spirit to it, and then 54 years from now, we can still talk about <laughs> this day. God bless each and every one of you. Happy holidays. Thanks to the board members who are here. We really, really appreciate it. And please be safe. Thank you very much.